Welcome to GeoInteresting, presented by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. For today's podcast, we're talking to Dr. Odin Serrano and Mr. Terry Ford about the intelligence community's role in combating wildlife trafficking. Mr. Ford and Dr. Serrano lead the IC's engagement with the combating wildlife trafficking community and help integrate the data collection and analysis. Welcome, Odin and Terry. Thank you for joining us. Um, Most of us know about wildlife trafficking, that elephants and rhinos are being poached for their tusks and horns. Why is it important that the IC is joining the combating wildlife trafficking effort, and why now? Yeah, let me just jump in and and, uh, start out by saying that uh, there is a a national strategy uh, to combat wildlife trafficking. I think it was signed about February of 14, something like that. Um, And and we're part of the U.S. government, and so we have a responsibility, that is, we, the intelligence community, to support this effort. It is a meaningful effort, and so we're part of the government. It's a whole government effort, so we need to do our part to contribute to that. And I think we bring a couple of things to it. I think we, we, we bring, first of all, some skills uh, that, that are useful to this effort uh, in terms of, for example, uh, how do you deal with data and how do you share data uh, across uh, different agencies and, and organizations. Uh, so I think that's, that's one thing that, that we do bring. And, and candidly also, we're very much interested in illicit activities. Most of what people see us working on are some uh, other types of illicit activities, but there are nexus between traffickers of one sort and traffickers of another. They're all involved in illicit activity. So we do we do watch that, and so we do see that, and so we think some of the information that we do come across will probably be useful to the larger government's effort. And I would add that, um, you know, the charter for the intelligence community is spelled out really for each agency, as Terry mentioned, through the task force working group. I'm at the more of the practitioner level, uh, and I've found, you asked why now, Uh, The intelligence community has been touching this topic for years. Uh, uh, We have done um, some work on this, but, you know, we are are competing with other requirements and other priorities. So the why now part is because we've had the leadership from both Terry Ford, uh, Director Cardillo, Director um, uh, Clapper, and uh, we are in a place where uh, that convergence of leadership backing has is prime, and so because of the why now part, uh, we have uh, their backing, their commitment to this, and now we are now part of the task force, which gives us the opportunity to work in a more integrated fashion. Okay, great. And uh, and speaking of integration, the uh, combating wildlife trafficking community me- community members are. Uh, odd bedfellows, I'd say, uh, NGOs, government agencies, the private sector, and international partners. Um, and DNI Clapper mentioned earlier, uh, he called the group an unusual aggregation, all linked by a common denominator. So what kind of new dynamic does the IC bring to the fold? Well, one of the things that we've tried to do is, is, the, is to, to further this whole effort of integration. And you know that's something that we do, I think, fairly well within the intelligence community. Director Clapper mentioned that this morning. The intelligence community itself is a relatively diverse group of, of, of agencies and activities. Uh, and so he's charted with integrating the efforts to make the community work as efficient, as effectively as it can. So we've had a lot of experience working as an integrated, part of an integrated whole. So that's something I think that we, we can bring, bring to that as well. And the issue of, of, of the, I mentioned before, of, of data sharing, making mm-hmm. data accessible to a wide variety of different kind of customers, understanding what their requirements are, we also probably experienced in that as well. Right. So we've learned that the intelligence community rely, is reliant upon the NGOs, who are really the experts in this topic. What we add is more of the Um, foundational component, sort of the mapping component to allow our NGOs to contribute their various uh, levels of data. Um, The other part that we're going to, um, that I've learned even more so today uh, through our first part of our symposium, is that 
Uh, by understanding the exact nature of what the customer needs, we heard from the tra traffic representatives and law enforcement representatives, it will help us to tailor and focus our contributions um, and, and fine tune those to be more exact of where those gaps are. So this is a gap analysis of what does the co broader community need versus what the intelligence community can provide and when you're going to do so through an aggregate as opposed to trying to ask for new resources which we know are going to be difficult to achieve so it's got to be through this collaborative effort to uh, mitigate that gap it's important for the global community to be able to share data and collaborate um, and the nga uh, portal makes that much easier uh, what kind of data is being shared and what's the next step? This so, is the expert, okay. uh, Dean, Dr. Serrano. So uh, again, coming from NGA, I believe that our geospatial mission, our geospatial data mission is the foundation of every other mission. It is a way to portray multiple um, instances of data in one view. And so NGA has led the way through their uh, Director Cardillo's vision for working in the open to provide this conduit, this environment for information sharing, a platform to aggregate our data. Uh, you ask what types of data. They range from uh, global level, you know, global view satellite telemetry all the way down to radio you know, radio, handheld radios. So it's everything in between. We're talking about um, uh, Twitter feeds. We're talking about open source data. We're talking about um, uh, non-traditional sources of information along with what we call a federated search. That is, every mission that we're going to hear about today has their own database, their own repository, a very rich data. And our goal is to integrate these protected environments of uh, data to help us get a better look. And that's what we uh, try to achieve through our common operating picture. Can I make an, an, another, can I go back to your first question? Sure. I think it's also important to realize that we are a small part of a much larger effort. And we think we can and should contribute to that effort, but by no means are we the end all to be all. And just because we are involved, it doesn't mean we're, we're gonna have a major effort and successes against wildlife trafficking. This will be a hard slog for many, many years to come, and we hope we can contribute to that. But like anything else, uh, you know, we can only do our part. We're not policy makers, we're not law enforcement, we're not the justice community. We are, as you said, enablers and supporters and integrators of this overall effort. So we have an important role to play, but I uh, wouldn't want anybody to walk away saying, well, geez, now that the intel community is uh, involved in it, we don't, I don't have to contribute anymore to um the uh, conservation group because the, all the problems are going to be solved in the next two years. I don't think so, but we'll do our part. And I would like to add that this effort is simply an, a model for other types of humanitarian relief or non-traditional intelligence topics where through uh, by looking at a, through a view of a topic and common goals and a common platform where we're harnessing a variety of sources of information for to advance respective goals and missions that model can be used for any topic wildlife trafficking um, you know Nepal Ebola the Arctic etc that's the vision from the director Cardillo, and um, it's I'm happy to see it coming to life. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank All you right, very much. thank you. Geo Interesting is presented by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's Office of Corporate Communications. For more information on NGA, visit www.nga.mil. You can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and never miss an episode of Geo Interesting by subscribing on iTunes and SoundCloud. Thanks for listening.